Shalom. This week, we celebrate Pesach. Let's be honest, our Pesach is lacking. If we read God's command of how Pesach is supposed to be celebrated, we're just missing out. Without a Pesach offering, a Beit HaMikdash in Jerusalem, and the entire nation gathering together, Pesach has become more about hotels and cleaning than the national celebration of freedom. In this Devar Torah, I want to highlight the Pesach of the past and hopefully of the near future. The Pesach with its offering and with the entire nation in the Beit HaMikdash. A number of the 613 mitzvot apply to the Pesach offering. The author of the Sefer Chinuch explained that each of these mitzvot, along with the offering itself, were designed to remember the great miracles which God did for us when he took us out of slavery. One of the mitzvot that applies to the Pesach offering is the prohibition of eating the Pesach offering uncooked or boiled. The prohibition, as the author of the Sefer Chinuch delineated the prohibition, to not eat from the meat of the Pesach sacrifice uncooked or boiled, but rather roasted with fire. As it is stated, do not any, eat any of it raw or surely boiled with water, but only roasted with fire. The explanation of the Chinuch continued with the reasoning of the mitzvah. That which we have written about its slaughtering is from the roots of this commandment, to remember the miracle of the exodus from Egypt. We have been commanded specifically to eat it roasted because eating meat is roasted in the, is the, eating meat roasted is the way of the children and kings and ministers. Roasted meat is good and tasty food. The rest of the people, those not of royalty, generally only eat the little meat that they are able to acquire boiled in order to fill their stomachs. It is fitting for us that eat the Pesach sacrifice to remember that we went out into freedom to be a nation of priests and a sanctified nation, Kohanim, to behave in a manner of freedom and royalty in its eating. During the Seder, we are told to act like free people so that we can feel as if we were freed at that very moment. We're not merely remembering a moment in Jewish history, but rather reliving a moment of our past. It makes sense to act as if we are free, but the portion from the Sefer Achinach we quoted takes our actions a step further, instructing us to act like royalty. When we were freed from Egypt, we were liberated, but royalty? We didn't even have bread. We had to eat matzah. The notion that we were royalty as we left Egypt came from God instructing the Jewish people that you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, Kohanim, and a sacred nation. In this, in his command, commentary to this verse, Rashi pointed out that only Kohanim were to be priests, but the sons of the tribe of Judah and not of Levi, the priestly tribe, couldn't be priests. Rather, Rashi suggests, priests actually means princes in this verse. Just as the prophet described King David's family and the sons of David were priests, but he meant princes. When the Jewish people were freed from Egypt, they immediately, immediately became liberated. God didn't emancipate them just so that they'd be free. The Jewish people were destined for a more meaningful future. They were to be a royal people, servants of God, the nation chosen to be a light unto other nations. As we celebrate Pesach, we are charged to reflect our two statuses. We are to express our freedom and our destiny as God's princely people. What a, an amazing charge for us and what a great concept, two concepts to remember this Pesach. Chag Sameach.